Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from April 20th until April 27th, as we are in a very interesting phase of energy right now, where we have just moved through the Libra full moon, the sun has entered Taurus, and we are approaching the Taurus solar eclipse on April 29th and 30th, which is also the same time that Pluto stations retrograde in Capricorn. And over this next week, we have fewer transiting energies in the cosmos, meaning there's more of a quiet and a lull happening in terms of one energy that we feel on a daily basis, meaning you could feel like things are starting to become a bit more grounded, especially with the sun in Taurus, where we look for simplicity. We look for what we can do with diligence, see it through, and just take our time to move something forward with a sense of focus as well. But in the background, we have much bigger energies still unfolding. And it feels like that Libra full moon really brought up something bigger in the atmosphere, maybe some watershed moments, maybe some turning points, maybe some big realizations, something that was perhaps even profound. Of course, this depends on your chart. And what it is also preparing us for is how we are moving into eclipse season with less to carry, with less in our energies that we're meant to travel forward with. Now, that Libra full moon, the sun in Taurus and the Taurus solar eclipse are all ruled by Venus. Venus is very prominent right now and she is in Pisces, an energy that supports her. She's comfortable. There's an ease in Pisces and she's also approaching an exact conjunction to Neptune in Pisces on April 27th at 24 degrees of Pisces. So we have very big Venus energies right now, but we also have very big Pisces energies. And what came through that I just want to offer is that we could be so tired of all the letting go, so tired of some of these Pisces themes around what you're understanding from the bigger picture, the bigger perspective, what you've been healing, what you've been releasing, what you've been forgiving. We could have fatigue from the fatigue of it all. And it feels like it's just been a lot bigger, especially since the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that only happens once in our life. And then that very powerful Libra full moon that had Pluto squaring the sun and the moon applying a pressure. And it's almost like we're really meant to clear things out. But again, we could just feel tired from it all and feel like, well, when is it really cleared? When is it really gone? When am I done with so much of this? And because that Jupiter-Neptune conjunction was once in a lifetime, this feels like a lot is coming up around Venus themes in this lifetime that you're clearing out through the Pisces energies through the Pisces experience of understanding the spiritual lessons. What were the soul contracts? What were you meant to see? Understanding more of what is no longer connected to you, what no longer reflects back to you, your self-value, self-worth, self-love, what is no longer a fit because the Pisces energy is about the completions of cycles and we're completing some very big cycles here but it's felt like it's been ongoing and that's the fatigue. That's the sense of, oh my gosh, there's still more here and it can feel very emotional because we have four planets in Pisces, Mars, Venus, Neptune, and Jupiter and Pisces energy is a water sign and it's the final water sign. It's the final tears, the final letting go, the final release, but it can be quite big, especially if you are an empath, highly sensitive, if you're intuitive or you just naturally are picking up energies, even in the collective, like you could be feeling a collective grief, a collective pain that isn't maybe personal, but it's something that you're aware of or tapped into. And so we're riding some big waves here that are asking us to look at bigger themes in our lives that at first can feel disappointing. They show up usually in the lower expressions 
of an astrological sign first so that we can intentionally and consciously work with them to elevate them up to a higher frequency that is truly representative of what you're willing to claim, honor, and love about yourself. So first it shows up as these lower Pisces vibes that can, again, feel like disappointment, loss, self-pity, blame, victim stuff can show up. And what we're meant to do is to work with it, to look at what is really true for you, what's really yours and what's not yours, what is something that honors what you've been through in a way that allows you to feel compassionate for yourself and for others. And as this Venus travels through Pisces, she's collecting a lot of wisdom She's receiving a lot of downloads and messages. Her intuition is expanding. Her ability to read energy is opening up. She is tapped into more of what truly resides in her high heart, her higher heart, which is the spiritual heart that we have that will hold unconditional love for everyone. And this is an unconditional love that allows you to accept people especially yourself, exactly where you are, where you're allowing things to be as they are, to look at what has transpired, what has unfolded, what has been perhaps any like patterns or themes or habits in your life, especially around Venus. So this can certainly be around money and finances. This can be around things in your life or in your world that you value, that you want, and how that energy has shown up for you. It can certainly be about relationships with women. And that's just a very dominant energy here since Venus is about feminine energy. And it can be about looking at these relationships with feminine energies as sisters or your mother, perhaps a girlfriend or your friends or people in your life that you've had romantic relationships with or personal connections with. It's understanding how a certain or certain versions of feminine energies have been showing up in your life and in your world based on what you believe, based on what you've held within yourself, within your own value system, within all of your energies, and how that has been reflected back to you. Now, this certainly involves karma, soul contracts, healing lessons, inner child work, all the things that we know about. All of that is wrapped up into this because all of that goes into our self-worth and and what we understand about ourselves as beings of love. And ultimately, this Venus in Pisces is helping us to elevate what that looks like, what that feels like. But again, these strong letting go energies are requiring a deep review, a looking back, a period of higher understanding, maybe even to get to the root of something that originated lifetimes ago. And that can certainly be the case with these very strong Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces energies. So all of this is very much in play this week. It is a big energy and it continues to grow as we approach the Taurus solar eclipse, where Venus is again very prominent because she's also so beautifully supported. Now that's something I want to really focus on is that as Venus travels through Pisces and as she's the ruler of the sun in Taurus and the ruler of that Libra full moon and the Taurus solar eclipse, she's actually gaining a lot of clarity, consciousness, strength, and power. So this Venus is beautifully supported in her own ascension process. Divine feminine energies are ascending. Feminine energies are ascending. And we are raising our consciousness around how that energy has shown up for us internally and individually, as well as what it has created in our lives to date. So again, you could be looking at money and finances and what you find valuable in your life, in your world. You could also be looking at the various relationship patterns and friendship themes with feminine energies that have also been prominent for you. And this is where you can have these watershed moments. And that Pisces energy, it speaks to us through our emotional bodies. And this is why you could be feeling tears and grief and things clearing out because you sense what's leaving or what's over and how it's related to a part of yourself, 
a part of who you've been, a part of what has mattered to you. And there's this turnover that's quite big through these last final weeks of April. So essentially, go very easy on yourself as needed. Give yourself time and space. That Pisces energy wants to be left alone, wants to have a beautiful outlet to move the energy. So that could be through something creative, something expressive, something that puts you in your own energy field. That could be through something that also grounds you, which is part of the supportive Taurus influence as well, where the sun in Taurus is helping you stabilize what matters. And to remind yourself that life can have simple joys, that there are things you can tune into and connect to that just naturally fit your energy, perhaps calm you down, support that emotional body, supports the movement of the water flowing. And that's because of how Taurus is an earth sign and Pisces is a water sign and how the earth provides a beautiful container for water to move and flow. So if you're feeling emotional, if a lot is moving through and you don't even know why, I mean, that's something that could be quite big right now too, is like, I don't even know why this is coming up or why I'm so sad or grieving or the tears just seem really big right now. It's all right on time with these big Pisces influences. There's something moving through you that's releasing and it feels like it's happening at a cellular level. Like it's quite deep. It's quite significant. And again, it relates to lifetimes of energies, lifetimes of themes, things that the rational mind might have a hard time understanding or grasping because it's an energetic experience. It's something that is quite emotional and it can also be cleansing you through multiple timelines at once. And so if you get hit by something, all of a sudden that big wave of emotion comes through, it could be something that your soul is experiencing in other timelines where I'm getting this image of five different scenarios all happening at once in a soul's experience across multiple timelines. So in one timeline, you are a mother and you're grieving the loss of someone. In another timeline, you are a brother and something has just happened to your sister. In another timeline, there is perhaps something unraveling and falling apart in a significant romantic relationship. In another timeline, it's like the loss of everything you own. I mean, it's almost like something comes through and takes away your most cherished possessions. And then in another timeline, it feels like the energy of being at the end of one's lifespan and assessing what relationship experience have have been like. So this is very interesting because it feels like it's that big, like it's all these different soul experiences stacked up, but they're all being flushed out. They're all coming through in a very powerful manner. And that's why it can feel extra emotional or intense at times when again, the logical mind doesn't get it because here you are moving through this life experience. And maybe those experiences are none of your reality right now, but your body, your soul, your energy field is clearing out a lot in those other realms. And because these are once in a lifetime energies, the more that you can honor them, appreciate them, welcome them, the easier it will be to ride these waves. And keep in mind, it doesn't last for a very long amount of time overall. Yes, we've been talking about these Pisces influences for a few months, but Jupiter moves into Aries on May 10th, and that's only a few weeks away. And this Venus is experiencing that Neptune and Jupiter and Pisces energies, whereas Mars will not have that same level of intensity. As Mars journeys through Pisces, he will have a conjunction to Neptune, but he won't have a conjunction to Jupiter and Pisces, and he isn't the prominent ruling planet right now either. So this is really working with our receptive energies, our feminine energies, as I've said, and it's understanding that that's the focus right now. That's what the universe is bringing our attention to. And it really isn't going to last too long overall because Venus moves forward, Jupiter moves forward, and there are not repeating cycles here. So if you can make the most of this particular time 
in your experiences of whatever is emotionally needing to be released, the better it's going to set you up for where you're going next and what is true for you now, especially in those Venus areas of yourself and of your life. Venus is traveling behind Neptune and Jupiter and will make an exact conjunction to Neptune at 24 degrees of Pisces on April 27th. And so here comes Venus after that powerful once-in-a-lifetime Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, and she brings in something that's more personal. She's a personal planet. She's that feminine energy we've been talking about. And she is now going to connect you with what that Neptune wisdom is, what your higher self wants you to realize, what you are ready to open up to and see from a spiritual perspective. And I actually feel this as a download from your God self, from your higher self, from your soul incoming, incoming wisdom, where this Neptune in Pisces is wonderful at dissolving, dissolving away what you no longer need, what you no longer want, also releasing you from what you've been carrying or holding, especially from a place of service or servitude for another. And that Neptune is wanting you to free yourself in some way, Remove any cords, any shackles, anything that feels tied to you that isn't of a higher frequency now. Keep in mind these Pisces energies are in the third deacon, which is the very last degrees of the full zodiac. So there are these big completion energies that we've been talking about, but this is the ascension. This is the rising up and elevating yourself to see more through the eyes of spirit and to connect with the wisdom that you're carrying, but maybe it's been covered up. Maybe you've been out of touch with it. Maybe there's something you haven't fully connected with. And this Neptune and Pisces can help with transcendence, with rising above, with ascending up and understanding more about these bigger life themes from a higher perspective. So again, this is where you could have some downloads about what these Venus love relationships have been for you. You could have bigger questions coming up around, well, what is sisterhood? What is friendship? What is true love? What does it mean for me to feel truly loved, valued, and honored? And all that begins within ourselves. So we're doing this deeper reprogramming within ourselves, and we've been going through it already. But as Venus now conjuncts Neptune, then she's going to receive more that lands in your heart that is more personal. Perhaps it's more insightful around what you are moving through and letting go of, but the information comes from your God self. So it also lifts you up and it shows you more of the energetic dynamics that you've been involved in. And of course, everything is energy. And that's especially the case in Pisces, where we transcend above the physical reality and things start to dissolve. Things start to take different forms and different shape. In fact, they start to fade out. The energy releases us in some capacity. And so with this Venus conjunct Neptune, you could have insights into how much you have grown, healed, and come to understand about yourself, about your own personal journey. And you could have an understanding of why the energetics feel so different or don't feel like they connect or where they do connect, where you are feeling that something is a better fit for you. And again, look at all areas of your life, but specifically where you have this 24 degrees of Pisces, because this has been the real hot spot for these changes and shifts. Also, This Venus conjunct Neptune is trining the south node in Scorpio and sextiling the north node in Taurus. So it's providing us with a new navigational direction of where to go next and also to understand that it's okay to step away or step back from anything that isn't in total resonance with you. Now, this is where we could have some interesting dynamics in relationships where these soul contracts are ending, where things are phasing out. There's nothing more that's meant to continue forward and you can feel it, even if there's a part of you that is still 
loving someone or you feel them in your heart. What is happening energetically is that the more evolved soul is moving on and moving forward. And that means the other person who maybe hasn't done the same amount of work or who's on a different frequency, who's moving through things at a different pace, perhaps they move slower. Perhaps they move in a different direction, right? They move sideways before they go forward. Uh, The energy is not connecting, but it's the person who's more advanced who senses this first, who realizes why it's not connecting. Connecting, and it's usually about how much you've been working through and healing and how you've changed. You've changed your own energy. Then the other person could feel that new shift in your dynamic. They could feel the void between you. And it's almost like as soon as you have one foot out the door or two feet out the door, you know, you're entering something new, they come rushing back because they sense that void. And this happens especially in any types of close relationships that you've had. And you can even look back on your life at how, you know, we make jokes about Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde, your ex comes back around or a friendship comes back around or something revisits you uh, to see if there is new connection or anything that can be reestablished. At an energetic level, it's because now the energies have changed. The person who's more advanced, more evolved is moving forward. The other person feels that so they can come back and see what is going on or what's changed. But energetically, they're feeling the disconnection. They're feeling, again, that void or that separation. And that's where someone can go into a panic. That's where someone can even get really stirred up or triggered. Perhaps this has been you in your life at some point. If there was someone that you felt was moving in a different direction, making different choices, making big changes in their world, and you sense that they were really gone or really leaving, Maybe you felt that energetically and then you wanted to reach out and see what was happening because you felt that shift. So this is certainly a big theme when we have these strong ascension energies where when there are big periods of evolution and we're moving on or we're making new choices or there's something within you that's really changed, If you are still connected, corded, or in any type of ongoing energetic dynamic with someone, they're probably feeling it. And that could be why they're coming back around or showing up. But that doesn't mean that the energy is still the same. And all of this can be part of the Pisces confusion, making it harder to navigate and understand what's going on, especially the people we have history with, the people that we've known, the people who know us and they've been in our lives or a big part of our chapters in our lives. There's things that come up that we're meant to truly assess and look at. Is this true for me? Is this honest for me? Is this really where I'm at? Are they going where I want to go? Is this still a mutual connection? And because we have strong relationship energies right now, all of this is quite dominant and quite big, especially with people that we've had lifetimes with. And because we're ascending in new ways and powerful ways, they're really feeling that as well. So we can certainly practice compassion and kindness, but make sure to give that to yourself. Make sure to honor what you've been through and what is true for you, what is honest for you now. Make sure to fully acknowledge who you are, what you've experienced, how you've changed, how you've healed, and to not go into those lower Pisces energies of martyring yourself or thinking you have to do something to fix someone or to please them or that you have to diminish your light in any capacity. Because part of this Venus energy is her light is rising. It's spreading and growing and expanding. And that's a beautiful gift of these Pisces frequencies. Where Venus makes a conjunction to Neptune, she gets downloads, intuition, insights. She also has a very deep cleanse that happens through that Neptune and Pisces influence. Then she takes that message or whatever she receives from her conjunction to Neptune and brings it to Jupiter, which is exact on April 29th and 30th, which is the solar eclipse. She is really stepping into more of her God self, her self-love, a higher vibrating connection to her higher self. 
And these are energies that are working with us across so many dimensions, especially when you are sleeping or resting, especially when there are parts of your energy that could feel very out of touch with the physical world. Now we're opening up to what we're meant to understand around these bigger Venus themes. And it is that big. And you know, one way that I always look at this or assess this is that it's pretty fascinating that we have Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus all conjunct at the same time because that doesn't have to happen. For example, Venus could be further along by now. She could be in Taurus or she could be in Gemini, but because of her retrograde, she was slowed down. So there's this really powerful alignment where we're getting into higher alignment with our love for ourselves at a soul level. It is that big, it's that significant, and then it gets confusing or perhaps a little bit awkward to then look at, well, how does that apply to my real world life, to the relationships I'm in, the friendships I've had, my family dynamics? How does all that come in? And Pisces is very soft and gentle. Pisces doesn't want to make waves or make drama or make anything complicated. So there's something here where we're truly trusting how the energies are shifting That's the truth. That's the truth that you're meant to connect with and own. And it could even feel like it's difficult to explain it or communicate it at times. So essentially, lifetimes of soul contracts are ending. And that is perhaps stirring up the pot or bringing things up or even showing you what's unresolved within you. But your higher self is here. There's a lot of supportive energy at this time, especially as Venus continues through the last deacon of Pisces. The other energy we have going on this week continues to be Saturn in Aquarius at 23 degrees, squaring that north node in Taurus and the south node in Scorpio, each at 23 degrees. And this is working with you strongly if you have planets or points in the fixed signs around 23 and 24 degrees and it's applying that pressure the pressure cooker energy it could feel like your mind is heavy or stuck it could feel like you're carrying a lot of responsibility for other people and trying to figure out maybe how to step back from that or how to change that so that you're not carrying so much weight or not feeling so responsible. This can show up too as our commitments that we have to others that we feel trapped in or locked into. I mean, this energy is tight right now. We've already been moving through it and it does continue into May, but there's something here that you're meant to really get a handle on about your individual needs, about your priorities going forward, and also looking at how you can allow other people to perhaps take on more responsibility or carry more weight. And this is specifically if you're carrying more than your quote unquote fair share, or if there's a lot on your plate and it's just too much. So there could be an energy here of you're ready to delegate. You're ready to separate some things out. You're ready to dismantle something and basically divide it up so that more people are contributors or participants, more people have a role to play or are responsible. So this is where we're looking at what we have created in our lives, where we're going next with it, and also being in your power and sense of responsibility, but also making sure you're not, again, caring too much because a lot of more advanced souls, a lot of light workers, star seeds, empaths, anyone who is very familiar with energy, you can so easily take on a lot because you're strong, because you're capable, because there's things you're good at and you are also perhaps being of service or you want to support other people. So it's looking at how does that support you now and what do you need to change up so that you're not holding yourself back, which could also inadvertently hold others back. And so Saturn is a mentor. Saturn is a guide. It's an energy that we tend to look up to because Saturn has maturity and experience. And so if that's you, if you're in that type of role in your family, in your profession, in your personal world, in your life, there could be things that you're ready to have conversations about to help 
find some new solutions or ways of doing things that will serve you going forward as well as serve the community. And this is a good week to have some conversations where we're going to have Mercury in Taurus first squaring Saturn in Aquarius, then sextiling Neptune in Pisces, then sextiling Jupiter in Pisces. And this is happening April 24th to April 26th. So these could be a few days where you're ready to have some big conversations that could actually go well that could actually develop into new potentials, new pathways, new possibilities. These are conversations with Mercury and Taurus that are clear, grounded, real. Maybe you're pulling up some financial information to show people what's going on. Maybe there's things you have to outline, you know, put together some visuals or something to demonstrate what is going on, what's happening. That Mercury in Taurus wants evidence and documentation of what you're discussing and what you're needing to make changes around. There's also energy here about just going slow and steady, managing a realistic pace, so not forcing yourself to have a solution right away, but to get some conversations going, to open up the dialogue around anything that's on your mind. And this Mercury is also going to be conjunct the North Node at 23 degrees around this time as well. So April 24th, April 25th, April 26th. These are days to have clarity around what you're ready to work on next, steps you're ready to make, anything that needs to be taken care of, and also to be in that place of simplifying. How can this be clearer? How can this be easier? How can we essentially get on the same page, but in a way that works for both of us? That's assuming you're talking to a coworker or another person, which would be different than talking to a group. But this is actually talking about what needs to be solved. As Mercury in Taurus connects with Neptune in Pisces and then Jupiter in Pisces, there's going to be some clarity around what you've been moving through and what you've been feeling. I'm feeling like there's something here that makes sense, where something just comes together. And in the bigger picture of it all, maybe you start to have clarity on a life theme around these Pisces and Venus energies that we've been discussing, where you understand more about that's why I had certain experiences or repeating patterns, or that's why I chose this or decided that or did that. It's like there's something that is landing with the Taurus energy. It's landing in a way that asks you to realistically assess Is this what I want now? Am I willing to invest in this? What is it going to cost me? And the cost isn't simply financial, it's that investment in time, that investment in emotion or that investment in a situation. And is that true for you? Is it in alignment with your priorities and your value systems at this time? Or is it no longer a priority and no longer meaningful? It's a good time to give yourself quiet to go easy on yourself, to let yourself be in your own space or in your own environment as much as needed, to not force anything. These strong Taurus and strong Pisces energies are feminine and receptive, and they're looking for downtime. They're looking for ways you can be in your own energy field that feel supportive and nourishing for you and allow you to go through your own process or your own processing steps for whatever has been coming up for you, especially here in the middle of April. The energy really picks up again next week as we move into that eclipse energy, Pluto stationing retrograde, and Mercury entering Gemini. Things pick up, go faster, and we can feel that. We can feel an acceleration. This is a good time to give yourself a break, to not be too hard on yourself, to try not to expect too much from yourself. Because again, we're processing and moving through so much in other realms that you could just feel exhausted and not know why. You could have trouble sleeping, even because you're feeling or sensing what else is happening in other parts of your energy field, especially out there in the cosmos. And you could just really need some quiet some peace, some grounding. So self-care is a beautiful priority right now. Anything that can help you slow down, tune in, tap into yourself, and just be connecting with your breath or connecting with 
the energy of the higher heart that is keeping you well loved right now. And I'm seeing that so much more light is coming onto the planet that we're holding that light. It's different. It's different frequencies. It's really a very foreign thing in a way, but it has this really beautiful loveliness to it, like a very soft pink, soft lavender, pure white energy that is also protecting us in a way from being too hard on ourselves or expecting more than we're really capable of doing right now. So of course, this is just general and trust what resonates with you and some of this might not resonate with you. I will of course depend on your own astrology chart and energy and consciousness at this time. But these are very interesting energies that are opening us up to what we're ready to clear out, where we're ready to allow some chapters to be complete because we don't have the energy within ourselves to sustain it. And that's where you could be feeling a heaviness, especially with the Saturn squaring the nodes, is that there could be something that you're responsible for or you're taking care of it, but it really isn't your true energy anymore. There could be something here where you kind of have to just go through the motions, get it done and stay the course, but you can feel how much you've shifted and grown away from it. So there's a lot here that could be confusing at times, but it's all supporting you in your own wisdom of knowing yourself. It also feels like new guides are coming forward. And I did mention this, I think a few weeks ago, that you could feel new angels, new spirit guides, new beings of light connecting with you because you're at a new frequency. So that's opening us up too, to more of where we're going to next and what we're ready to connect with because now we hold those light frequencies and that's based on everything you've cleared out everything you're healing and working through. Even if some days it's a struggle and it's heavy or hard, there's energies here that are supporting us in that ascension process to carrying new light codes in our aura and in our being. Now we've talked a lot about these Pisces energies and also some of the Taurus energies, but keep in mind the sun in Taurus is going to help you manage this. It's going to help you set the pace, navigate responsibly, it's going to help us just slow down, take it one day at a time, and also connect to the body. Anything you can do right now to move energy through your field is going to be very beneficial. Anything too where you just feel your body wants to move, your body needs to experience some type of healing or energy, this is a beautiful time to tap into your body consciousness and the wisdom that we hold there. Mars in Pisces is not very active this week. In fact, he is traveling unaspected through Pisces. And that means he's literally just floating and coasting along. So the masculine energies could feel like they're on a bit of a break, so to speak, as we have this big focus on the Venus feminine energies going on. So if you're feeling that physical slowdown, maybe a little bit of being less motivated or not wanting to do too much, uh, this energy does not support asserting oneself very well. It feels like you do something when the energy supports it. Mars and Pisces is where if you don't have the energy today, you're not going to force it, but maybe the energy will happen tomorrow and you'll get a lot done. So it's very inconsistent with Pisces. And this could be another way to go easy on yourself and not have high expectations if you're just not feeling it. And then again, two days later, you could be ready to go, make a lot of progress, knock off your to-do list, and that's because the energy was there to support it. Now, we only have a few more weeks left of these strong Pisces energies. We're actually going to see Venus move in to Aries on May 2nd. Then we'll have Jupiter enter Aries on May 10th, which begins a whole new 12-year cycle. So this is significant, especially if you put it in terms of what you're ending or completing in this lifetime over the past 12 years. 
And one of the many gifts of Pisces is that it prepares us for the new start of Aries energy. So we're almost to a new starting line. There's going to be some fresh downloads and motivations coming in. And in the meantime, considering how fast time is flying by and everything that we're moving through, that will happen in no time. That will be here soon enough and it will be much easier to take action or do the next thing because there will genuinely be energetic support for it. It's a beautiful week to go easy on yourself. Give yourself a break. Give yourself more time to do things. Maybe you want to disconnect from some things, some situations, some people. Maybe you need to step back and give yourself time to process or think or be in your own energy. Whatever feels right for you, trust it right now. Trust it because there is a purpose for it. There's a reason for it. And it's also so important to continue to trust ourselves as we move through these energies and embark upon new cycles when the eclipses begin. I wanted to give a quick thank you to all of you who have pre-ordered my new book, Awakening Astrology, which will come out May 24th. But those of you who have already pre-ordered, you can certainly join me for the free workshop on April 26th. And if you would like to do so, you can also pre-order the book and then sign up for the free workshop. And this free workshop, I'm also giving you a companion worksheet. We are going to move through five pages in the worksheet and go through some specifics for you to understand about your astrology chart. I'm really excited to teach this. I'm talking about it for the first time in this workshop and I hope it helps you to see something new and different in your chart that maybe you hadn't thought about or noticed before. So check out my book, Awakening Astrology. Once you pre-order it, you just take that receipt number and put it in to the special field on the workshop sign up. And then the publishing company will reach out to you with the details and specifics for the workshop. I'm going to put all the details below so you can check out the link. And all the information is on that one link. So that keeps it simple for us. A replay will be available of the workshop, so no worries if you can't make it live, and it will be available for you to watch and access going forward. I wish you a beautiful week of self-care and emotional cleansing in the week ahead as we continue to ride these very big Pisces waves and allow what we're ready to receive to come in to come forward, to be in our energy, whether those are the messages, the wisdom, the breakthroughs, again, those watershed moments that shed light exactly on what you're meant to know right now, especially around these Venus themes in our lives. I will see you back here for a new podcast every Monday and Wednesday. And you can find out more about my current astrology offerings and business development courses over at mollymccord.online. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is wonderful to connect with you through this amazing world of astrology. And I look forward to talking with you again soon about what these energies are bringing up for us. Take good care and I'll see you soon.